Hey guys, it's Paul coming at you from Nah Train, Vietnam. <laughs> Alright, so I've been here about four days now. And I really, really, really needed to get out of New Getty for a while because I was getting really disgruntled. Um, my list of complaints about living in the Philippines is that long. And my list of solutions for what's wrong with the Philippines is that long. I don't have any answers. I don't have any solutions. And it's good to get away from it for a little while because you can, not only do you get a break, but it reminded me after about two days away that I didn't move there to fix the Philippines. I moved there to get fixed. And I didn't move there to change the Philippines. And I moved there to be changed for the better. You see, my life in America I'd run out of options. The, the, the well had run dry, if you will. And so I was looking straight into living an existence of, as I've said before, of Groundhog Day. You know, just one day, waking up, doing whatever I do, uh, coming home, eating dinner, watching TV, going to sleep, and repeating it all over again. And I just didn't want to settle for that. And that's what I would have done if I'd have stayed in the States. I would have settled and I would have gone to my grave having settled, but I didn't want to do that. So I made the move, and I am so, so happy that I did. Um, I have changed for the better. It's fixed me. It continues to fix me. And yet my human nature is, is now I'm living, you know, I've got a nice place. I'm living within budget. I don't have the monetary stresses or financial pressures that I felt in the States. Um, I have a beautiful little girlfriend, Baby May. Um, I've got a great network of friends, and yet I've managed to get pissed off. <laughs> and actually started looking around saying, well, I don't know if this is all that, you know, because maybe I can go here, or maybe I can go there, or I can do this, or I can do that, and it'll be all better. So, coincidentally, my friend Gary, my best friend for 30 years, is in Vietnam right now. And he very graciously invited me to come out here and hang out with him for a while. So for three weeks or a month, I'll be here with Gary. And uh, we'll be doing the town. So the last four days, I've actually just been playing tourist. I haven't done any uh, investigative work as far as rents and, and how much would it cost to live and where would I go and what would I do. I've uh, just been hanging out with him and kind of enjoying the stuff that I cannot get in Dumaguete, uh, primarily food options, which are very limited there. Um, the internet over there in Dumaguete, very, very limited. Um, the pollution over there is just in your face all day in Dumaguete. When you get on your little scooter, my gay little red scooter, and I go buzzing around with me, we're just getting hit with plumes of diesel fumes and exhaust and all that. Uh, bug bites come out of nowhere in Dumaguete. You just get covered. Um, I've had a cough since I landed uh, there three years ago just from, I don't know, air quality or different kind of bacteria. Or may has got a respiratory, upper respiratory infection or had one before I left. I had the same thing. So. I just needed to get some clean air and some different food and a different perspective. And I was really considering moving here um, prior to coming out here uh, because of all my list of complaints that I have about the Philippines, right? So why wouldn't I investigate something else that doesn't have all those issues? And that seemed to be not trend Vietnam. Um, it's got the lowest humidity rate in all of Southeast Asia. It's got super modern uh, living conditions. The price of living here is higher, in my humble opinion, and according to Google, <laughs> it's about 30% higher. But I think there's wiggle room in that. I think that you can, you can adjust it and you can maybe negotiate and possibly settle for something different. Um, so all the problems that I have in, and, or not problems, but all of the 
issues that I deal with, like the brownouts and the internet and the dogs, the stray dogs and the poverty in your face and the lack of food options and all that kind of jazz, um, is pretty much non-existent here. Um, I think I've seen one dog just kind of wandering around in the four days that I've been here, a stray dog. Um, I haven't seen any abject poverty, but at the same time, I'm kind of in the tourist zone here, so that's that remains to be seen. Um, pollution, gotta tell you guys, it's it's fresh, clean, low humidity air. Um, the cars and the motorbikes and the buses are all modern. Um, there's a big Chinese influence here, so they're building one high rise after the other and they're busing people in. So there's a lot of tourists here, but that's, that's doable. Um, so at the end of the day, my food choices are way higher here. Um, I'm gonna say the cost of living is within my budget. It might be a little bit higher, but you can always dial it back. Uh, for example, there's air con in the, in the family room or the living room in these apartments and each bedroom. So if you just wanted to stay home and watch Netflix or if it's raining outside or whatever the case might be, you can stay at home and have more of a homebody type of life without going out to eat, without going here and going there and spending the unnecessary money. And I think you can bring the budget down just because the comfort level at home is so nice and inexpensive. Electricity here is a lot cheaper. Um, that, that the budget will fix itself, if you will. You get your fixed expenses, maybe it's 50 bucks a month more for the rent. Maybe it's another 50 or 60 bucks a month more for food that you buy and bring home, because that's what Google says. Uh, the restaurants, eating out, are on par as far as price goes. Uh, you actually have an option here of eating pho, which is their soup, noodle soup, which is delicious. And you can buy that for like a buck. And that's a meal that will fill you up. And it's healthier, it's better tasting, and it's got a lot of variety just within itself. So you don't get that in the Philippines. You don't get that in Dumaguete. Um, there are little sandwiches, I forget what they're called, but you can buy those for 80 cents. And you can't get those in Dumaguete. They're real tasty, they're real cheap. It's street food. So you can navigate here and you can satisfy your palate and your appetite, I can, every day with something different and still keep it within budget. If I wanted to splurge and go out to breakfast in Tumaguete and get an American breakfast with a coffee, say over at PJ's, which is where I like to eat breakfast, it would run me five bucks. If I wanted to come over here, I could have that same breakfast for five dollars. But if I wanted to have a uh, hollandaise sauce, and if I wanted to have, what did I have the other day? I had some kind of bruschetta ham and uh, different kinds of potatoes and this and that and the other, um, and a different style of coffee, it would run me about $7. So I have that option if I wanted to splurge one day and go out. I don't have that option in Dumaguete. Now, they say that, that you're Ability to meet people over here or females over here are a lot less likely to happen than in Dumaguete. And I would tend to agree with that. I wouldn't put it out of the, out of range. Um, my friend Harry, five years ago, was here and met a woman and married her. And they were happily married for, for years. Eventually, that changed. But my point being is that he did meet someone was beautiful, she was much younger than him, and they had a life together. So I would take that, I would take that statement with a grain of salt. In other words, is it impossible to meet somebody over here? Absolutely not. Can you meet somebody? Absolutely. But it's not the same dynamic that you find in the Philippines. In fact, it's a much more traditional, Americanized, if you will, uh, style of dating where you, you meet and it's just not, okay, I'm in love with you, we're gonna move in. That happens a lot in the Philippines. But it's more of a get to know each other, meet the family, kind of get each other's approval, and then move forward, which is a lot more of what I'm used to in the States. So, what's the problem? 
I mean, why wouldn't I move here? Um, there's one thing that's really, really, really lacking in Not Trang that I have in Doom and Getty. It's smiles. I was sitting two days ago having a cup of coffee with Gary, and it dawned on me because it was something that was different, and I couldn't put my finger on it. It's like, what's different, man? I mean, the internet's awesome. The girls are beautiful. It's ultra modern. It's it's better weather. Um, you know, there's all this variety of food. Um, the traffic is is so deep, but more easy to navigate. What's wrong? What, what, what's, why am I not getting it? Nobody was smiling. Not one person. And I sat and watched for like 15, 20 minutes. In the Philippines, there is a soul that kind of a heartbeat, if you will, of joy and of forgiveness and even of love and sharing. It just sort of pulsates throughout the entire the entire country. No matter where I've gone in the Philippines, my travels have not been extensive, but I've bounced from here and bounced from there. And one thing that I can count on is that the people are always so gracious, they're always so loving, they're always so welcoming, and no matter what they've got, in most cases, they're willing to share it with you. And so, I think that's what I want to share with you today, is that I was driving an $80,000 car and living in a half a million dollar house, and I had a nagging wife that wouldn't shut up and grind on me, and I wanted to be anywhere but there in that $80,000 car, in that half a million dollar house, because of the person that was sitting next to me. And now I'm out here, and I've got all this high rise, and I've got this fast internet, and I've got this delicious food, and I've got no traffic, and there's no smog, and I haven't been bitten by one bug, but I'm just not feeling any love. And it's just kind of an empty, non-existent existence that you have out here, in my opinion. Even if you met that special someone, just the whole vibe of the whole place is, is kind of a downer. You know, it's people will smile at you if you're spending your money. And in the Philippines, they'll smile at you in spite of having any money. They just want you to smile back. They don't want anything else from you. And that to me is, is where I got changed. If I was to move out here, I would be changed all right. I would be changed right back to the guy that I was before. And I'd be chasing things that aren't there. Where in the Philippines, I can have a dream and I can chase it and I can actually catch it and I can actually acquire it. I just want to tell you right now how grateful I am to the Philippines. And how grateful I am to all the people there that love me, how grateful I am to May, and how grateful I am to God for having introduced me to it and giving me the opportunity of the second chance in life. I want to wish all of you a very, very Merry Christmas. God bless you.